hello welcome to take a step to a better you my name is Sharifa and my intention here is to share what I know and what I continue to learn so that maybe you'll find something you could use in your own life to take a step to make your life better doesn't matter what level you are on we always want to do better today I would like to talk to you about your why what is your why do you know what that is let me uh, use a different word what is your purpose why do you think you're here what keeps you going every day when you wake up you sleep what are you thinking about what do you think is your purpose this could be a religious answer for some people but not for everyone what are your values what is important to you? What makes you happy? So, I want to share in this video my purpose. In fact, I have four. But in this one, I'll share only one. And then I'm going to record three more videos. And hopefully, as I uh, give examples of my whys, maybe you see which one is yours. It may be like mine, or it could be different. My goal is for you to start thinking about your why and to please live a purposeful life. You are a unique individual, you are a unique person, you have a lot of potential and this why, once you know what it is, maybe you already know what it is, but if you don't, once you know what it is and you start working following that why, it's going to pull you to areas you never knew. I never knew I could be on, talking to you right now, but it's because of my why. It will come later <laughs> in one of the four. Today, it's a different one. Today's why is, I've called it, who is counting on you? Think about it. Who is counting on you to be successful? Who is cheering you on? You know, some of them you may not even know. They are looking up to you you may not even know maybe you know or maybe you don't please think about it who is counting on you to do better so you can help them I'll tell you a story and the intention for telling this story is so that you can think about your own life I was 24 when I had my first daughter and I remember the uh, midwife handing me the baby. You know, they wrap them up, and but you can see the head, you can see uh, the fingers. So what I did, I looked, I saw, I saw the hair, I saw the uh, the ears. Then I saw, okay, the face. You know, they always close their eyes, so they are not looking at you. You look at them, and then up here, the fingers were like this. I remember looking. These are cute fingers, and they're long. And you know what surprised me? You'd be surprised. Uh, I mean, you, you, may be, you may say, why, why that? It was the nails. I looked at the nails. They're all real. I said, all this was inside me? Oh, my God. This is a, a true miracle. I said, this is the true miracle. But then I thought about something else my why this baby my miracle is going to count on me is count on counting on me it's my job to make sure she's okay make sure she gets what she needs i don't know about dads when they how they see their first child how they feel because i'm not a man but i i think they also feel the same way oh my god we've created a real person I think something shifts in them too. But I think for mothers, it's even more different because this child grows up in you. So you say, oh my God, I have to be the number one person they can count on. At least that's what happened to me. The other people may help you, they may support you, but this is your number one responsibility. And that's how I took it. Every single day, I'm thinking, how can you, how can you uh, do better? How can I, like, 
provide all those things that you have to do to make sure your child is fine. And guess what? I did all that, but like two years later, another miracle happened. And this one, but I was I delivered in the same place, the same person, uh, the, the, the same environment. When they handed me over this one, she was a little bit different. The other one was long, you can say long or tall and small. And this one was shorter and bigger. So I looked at the same fingers, I looked at, I said, oh, this one is different, unique. We are all unique. They are all beautiful, but different. So now, remember what happened to me when I saw the other one and the nails and everything? This one, it was a different feeling. You know, I was a little bit scared, a little bit. I said, oh my God, I have all these two depend on me as their number one go-to person in case of anything. That's when I started thinking about I already had my first degree, but I started and a good job. But I started thinking maybe I'm gonna need more education. Maybe I wanna. That's when I, my brain started like exploding with ideas, because I knew these people, these new miracles, are going to depend on me, as their number one person. The dad is there, but in my brain, the way I think about motherhood, I feel like. When you bring a child, you decide to bring a child into this world, that's your number one responsibility. The father, when, uh, the way I think, people who know me know the way I think. I say, what if, what if? Okay, what if the father is not there? What if something happens? You are the number one person. You have to make sure, as you're having these kids, this is my opinion, you have to make sure whatever happens, you'll be there for them. That's my opinion. You could have a different opinion. So that's what I was thinking. I need more education. I need to do better. That's when I started thinking of more, um, like, uh, actually, we had to move to another city, to the capital city, and then later to America. I came to America for more education. That's why I did my accounting. That's when I get into more computers. And all because of. If I was like just one person, I don't think I would have done all that. It's because of my why and who is counting on me. So I come and even in America, I work day and night. Anytime, it doesn't matter. America is 24 hours. Everything I had to do, I did to make sure my children would be fine. And you know, in America, I originally come from Uganda and now I'm in my America, there's a time difference seven hours sometimes in eight hours depending on the season i had to call late nights most of the time when they are out of school so you can call and talk to them make sure they are fine and uh, that, that's a long story and at that time we didn't have the way things are now it had to be at and and what was the name of the other one long distance very very expensive but we had to do it to see a photo it had to come to America by express mail. Express mail to see how they are doing now. Ex uh, to bring the letters, we exchange letters, real letters. No texting, no everything that's going on now. But it's like every moment you're thinking, okay, now what do I do? And now you're thinking, or I'm thinking, how do I get them to America too? It's a long process. You have to get a green card first and then become a citizen. So when I became a citizen, I was lucky to become a, a US citizen. I bring them to America. All that time in Uganda, there are people helping me. I don't want to get into details of that. But as these people are doing a, maybe even a better job than me, you still feel like it should have been your number one responsibility. Now I'm lucky. I'm able to bring them to America and I feel a little bit better. And meanwhile, I got miracle number three. And miracle number three, let me tell you about the birth too. They hand me over uh, miracle number three. That's my third daughter. She's different also. She's not as as tall as the other one or long they call it long when they are babies 
and she's not as short as the other one, so uh, the second one, so she's in the middle. And even when you see my daughters today, they are all unique and different. They don't look like each other. It's, it's the biggest thing, like I, I say, you, do you have the same mother? I joke around. Because even at birth, they looked different. That's a miracle. So, now I'm dealing with miracle number three. And miracle number three uh, was blessed. She would, uh, needs special schools. I'm trying her. She couldn't go with regular buses because she was always getting these advanced courses. So I have to drive her to get to the special buses. And then I have my two miracles from Uganda. They're here going to college. Sometimes I have to pick up, drive this one and pick up this one, drop off that one. Oh my God. But then it got better. They started drive, learning to drive. It's my job still to make sure they learn how to drive. They learn all the American uh, details. It's a, it's a country full of, it's like I call it a system. It's like a system. You have to learn how this is done and how that is done. And already they're in school. So long story short, they get to where they have all had jobs. They bought their own cars and they cannot drive and take themselves wherever. But guess what? Because I still have that my why in me, I still check on them. And then my first miracle, that one said, but mommy, we're adults. Yes, you're adults, but a mother, you still feel like it's your job to make sure they're fine. I'm getting used to that. But... Uh, because now the first one is uh, finished uh, college, is working, and this, the middle one will be finishing college in a few months, and the young one will be going to the uh, third year of college. So you see, I feel a little bit better. Now, that's my story. Who is counting on you? Believe me, there are people counting on you, or maybe they are not counting on you yet. But they could count on you if you you showed up to be the leader. They don't have to be relatives. They don't have to be your children. It could be someone else. So, please, think about it. And if you like my story, what I'm talking about here, please uh, like it, uh, share it, make some comments. What do you think about motherhood? Anything I just said here. And... Uh, share it subscribe to the channel in the next video I'll be talking about my why number two and my why number two came about as I noticed I, I, I was feeling a little bit better my children are all independent now they know what to do so it's got a little bit better and my why number two started so uh, in the next video I'll talk about that and there'll be why number three and why number four. I have four whys. So uh, as I always end them, take good care of yourself and the people who count on you. Uh, until next time, bye-bye.